Uh, so today, right, we're going to go through this uh, question and answer. Uh, the client didn't actually ask me this question uh, per se, but I sort of rephrased it. And uh, the question that we're going to answer today, right, is what is the principle of separate legal personality? Uh, so when I do anything, right, I always tell my clients that uh, we must always look at uh, this principle and then we try to understand the principle and see how we go about uh, dealing with matters. Okay, uh, in short, right, uh, the principle of separate legal uh, personality or separate legal entity, right, uh, is a concept that exists for certain business entity structures, like for example, public or private companies and limited liability, liability partnerships. Okay, so these are uh, what we call company structures. Okay, so essentially, right, uh, the company is a non-living thing and can only act through its directors. Okay, because the company uh, obviously is not a living thing, okay, like not, not like us humans which are living things, right? So the directors, they have to act, they have to give life to the company through their actions. Okay, that's why um, whenever clients come to me, right, I always tell them the directors are executive, uh, uh, exec are in an executive position and act on behalf of the company. Okay, so uh, the directors, right, essentially are the company. The, the company cannot act on its own. It must act through the actions of its directors. Okay, so what happens is that, right, a company, when you incorporate a company, is considered a separate legal entity and it has separate legal personality. What this means is that uh, you have to, uh, in your mind, uh, imagine that you are giving birth to another person. Okay, so like another human being, right, you don't share, uh, your, you don't share your bank account with your friends, okay? So you, you and your friend's bank account are not mixed together okay uh, if your friend's property is your friend's property your own property is your own property just in that same vein right a company has separate uh, legal personality and as a separate legal entity right it can enter, enter contracts that means the company will sign the contract with another company or with another person okay so when the company signs an employment contract with let's say its employees it's not the director who's uh, signing with the employee the director is acting on behalf of the company. So the company is signing the employment contract on behalf of the employee. So if anything goes wrong, the employee takes action against the company. The employee doesn't take action against the director who signed on behalf of the company. Okay, so in that same vein, right, whenever a company enters into a contract with, let's say, a vendor, a supplier, Okay, or, or let's say uh, it enters into a contract uh, maybe to, to, to construct a building for a client. Okay, then these are uh, private contracts and these private contracts, right, uh, allow the company to sue and be sued. So just like, let's say if I personally uh, get somebody to uh, renovate my house and the person does a pretty bad job and ran away halfway with my money, I can sue that, that person. If that person is a company, right, then I'll sue the company. In the same vein, right, if let's say you incorporate a company and your company signs an agreement to maybe uh, deliver 10 lorries, let's say you're in the business of, uh, of, of, uh, of supplying lorries, uh, transportation to, to, uh, to a client and you don't, and the company that didn't deliver on that promise, that contract, then your company, the company can be sued by whichever company that it was contracting with. Okay, in the same vein, right, uh, like a normal person can hold property under their own name. Let's say I buy a, a, a condominium or I buy a landed property or buy a HDB flat, I can hold the, the, the property under my own personal name. The company can do so as well. Okay, so the company can purchase a condominium, the company can purchase an office and the office owner will be the company's name. Okay, so essentially, right, uh, what happens is that the officers and shareholders are behind a veil. So the, the, the courts, right, have, uh, have always been very slow or very uh, unwilling to pierce the corporate veil or lift the corporate veil. So this is what the corporate veil stands for. Okay, the officers and shareholders are hiding behind this veil. So when you are dealing with a company, right, you're dealing with this company, you cannot lift the veil and see who the officers and shareholders are and then you hold the shareholders and officers liable for whatever that you contracted with the company okay there are some exceptions okay uh, if let's say 
the 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 company was uh, set up incorporated right uh, to perpetuate a fraud. Okay, then in that case, right, the veil can be lifted, but that's for a separate uh, separate uh, presentation altogether. Okay, so essentially, the company has its own legal existence, uh, separate from the individuals who own or manage it. So the people who own the companies are shareholders. The directors are the ones who uh, run the company or manage the company. So because of this, right, uh, you need to think of the law as uh, always trying to uh, deal with possible mischief, which means that people might come up uh, with bad ideas to take advantage of this situation. Okay, so uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, there are legal and regulatory requirements. Uh, is the need for accountability. So if let's say the, the directors, right, uh, they act, and then they act on behalf of the company, then the directors may say that, oh, I can don't act, uh, I can act in my best interest, uh, and then I don't really bother much about the company. Because uh, whatever I do, right, then the company will get sued, not me. Okay, so the, the, the law, right, in the company's act, it actually provides for the duties of a director. So the director has to act within the company's act. Okay, and uh, the law makes it such that the director's uh, don't uh, disadvantage the owners of the companies which uh, of the company which is the shareholders so essentially the directors need to account for their actions through an annual general meeting so there is a statutory requirement that every year a company has to hold an AGM that's the reason uh, why there is an AGM is for accountability to prevent possible mischief because of this concept of separate legal personality. So the shareholders, right, what they do is that um, they will have to come for this AGM, the, director, the directors have to prepare the financial statements and show it to the shareholders. And the shareholders have to look through the financial statements and peruse it. They have to go through and understand uh, what is going on with the company. And if there are any questions that uh, pertain to these financial statements or whatever has happened uh, with the company throughout the year, they can raise it at the AGM. Okay, so that is internal uh, accountability. But externally, right, uh, the regulators like ECRA and IRAS, right, uh, they also put in force uh, legal and regulatory requirements. So ECRA, right, uh, they, they, the legal requirement, uh, legal and regulatory requirement is that uh, the company has to do annual return filing. Okay, what it means is that the the company has to inform the registrar of companies, which is ECRA, that we have complied with all statutory requirements of holding an AGM and accounting to our shareholders. And this is a report or a, or a filing to say that we've done this. So you have to state when do you hold the AGM, you have to upload the the, the AGM documents, you have to upload the financial statements and in some cases you need your finances to be your financial statements to be audited. Okay? And then at the end of the day, right, uh, IRAS, which is the tax authority in Singapore, uh, the company will have to file taxes with IRAS. Okay, only with the company filing taxes with IRAS, right, can the company have uh, what we call like a like a financial identity whereby uh, it has a financial status or a financial holding within the banks. So that means in, in future, when the company wants to purchase a property under its own name, right, the bank is lending to the company based on uh, its own financial standing, not its financial standing of the shareholders or the directors. Although it's quite common for the banks, right, let's say if the company goes to UOB to uh, take a loan to purchase maybe a, condo, a condominium or an office or a factory, our warehouse. Uh, the, it's quite common for UOB to maybe ask the directors or the shareholders to put up a personal guarantee on behalf of the company. But in that case also, right, it's very important that uh, the people who are putting up the personal guarantee right, understand what they are putting up the personal guarantee for. Okay, they are actually putting up the personal guarantee uh, to guarantee uh, that the company, which is a separate legal personality, the separate legal entity, is able to fulfill its installments of the mortgage. Okay, so there's actually repercussions if there is lack of accountability and that's where statutory fines and punishments come into place. 
Okay, so that's the concept or the principle of separate legal personality. Uh, if you guys have any questions, right, uh, or if you want to know more, or you want to incorporate a company and you want to know uh, the pros and cons, right, then uh, please contact us at uh, these two websites or you can email us at hello at referrals corporate services.com. Okay, so that's all from me. See you in the next video.